this is the thing. This is a, a blind spot of a lot of people who are fortunate enough to have been born and grow up in a country like the USA or the UK, especially if they haven't traveled mm -hmm. a lot, is that you, people do not understand just how good they have it. I think we live in a time where, for a lot of various reasons, people are losing their sense of humor, in a way. And with me, you know, sometimes someone will hear me chuckle or laugh at this, oh, you shouldn't laugh at that, that's not funny. And I'm like, no, it is funny, it is funny. If you have a golden Trump tower on Greenland and he's saying, look, don't worry, I'm not gonna do this to Greenland. You don't, that's fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's just a sense of humor. And even if you do find, the, even if someone does find some of the whole process or situation frustrating or annoying or what I mean what better way to deal with something than just be able to laugh at it you know when the time comes to go and vote vote for whoever you think is the right person if you like Trump go vote for Trump if you don't like Trump go vote for whoever you think is going to do a better job if he's as terrible as you th so you're saying he is it shouldn't be that hard to find somebody who you think will do a better job but ultimately your success or your failure is not going to have anything to do with the government unless you get some sort of huge tyrannical regime that's really, really cracking down on people's freedoms and their ability to do things, whether your life is great or your life sucks, normally it's not gonna have anything to do with the government or politics, let alone any individual politician. So if you're somebody who for the past two and a half years has been complaining about, oh, Trump has ruined the US or Trump has ruined my life or whatever, <laughs> You know, I mean, I had some people who... You're, you're speaking my language, man. Yeah. Finish that thought. Bring that one home. Because <laughs> I think that's it right there. If you're yeah. saying this guy and this government yeah. is evil, it's not about replay, It's not about just getting your guy in in a, in a more powerful government. Mm. It's about perhaps taking a little bit of that power back. Maybe yeah. that's the easier way to do yeah. it, the better and way to do look, it. Look, I mean, everyone is... You're going to succeed or you're going to fail largely off of your own terms. It, this is the thing. This is a, a blind spot of a lot of people who are fortunate enough to have been born and grow up in a country like the USA or the UK, especially if they haven't traveled mm -hmm. a lot, is that you, people do not understand just how good they have it. Even someone who, by American standards, is not up, up at the top, on a global level, you're st people want to talk about the 1%, you're still, I think, I think to be in the 1%, I, was, I looked this up, I think if you earn over $31,000 a year, then in terms of income, you're in the global 1%. The, the global 1%. 1%. You're in the global 1% with mm -hmm. an income of $31,000. Mm -hmm. And then once you factor in opportunity and healthcare and life expectancy and just opportunity, I mean, most people in the world would bite your hand off to be living in a council estate in the UK or in a hood in, the U.S. Everyone's so is, still trying to come here, right? Yeah, yeah. We're not this, locking people in. Yeah, absolutely. So this isn't saying that there are no problems in these individual countries and in certain cities. Of, of, of course there are. Um, but I just think that in 2019, what a lot of people are just missing is a sense of gratitude. Gratitude and perspective, I think, are the two things that a lot of people are missing when you're seeing everybody just angry and shouting and complaining and saying this is horrible and this is terrible. And I'm like, what are you comparing things to? What, what do you think that says about the human condition maybe, or the way the internet, the way we can't really understand the way the internet is changing us? Mm. Because obviously the internet has done incredible things and connected us and you know, we met through Twitter, yeah. the, the evil Twitter, right? <laughs> so like there's all of this incredible stuff. People are watching this on the internet. That, that's all spectacular and amazing and mind blowing yeah. from only 20 years ago. And yet on the other hand, then it keeps people in this odd paralysis or this, this state of uh, lack of gratitude or lack mm. of understanding how good it is in, in a lot of these places in the yeah. West. Well, I think we used to think that the problem was lack of access to information, and I think that the internet has proven that that's not the, <laughs> that's not the issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think it's, uh, I think it's, wow, I, th I think it's actually a lot of things. I, I think it's a lot of things. I think it's a lack of understanding of history and knowing how good stuff is in 2019 compared to prior decades. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that we did really live in, you know, there were virulent amounts of racism and homophobia and sexism and bigotry and you know, stuff enshrined in law, which says, okay, this group can do that, this group cannot do that, this people can do that. And 
And in the West, that has basically been obliterated. That, yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's, and that's incredible. I mean, if you think of the thousand, on a thousand, several thousand year perspective, you know, 200 years ago, less than 200 years ago, people could own slaves. Like, that existed for thousands, that institution existed for thousands of years. That, on a grand scheme of things, you know, and you look at poverty levels and what people have access to and things like that, I mean, a poor person now, or, you know, relatively poor, lives better than royalty not so long ago, has a higher life expectancy, has better health care, things like that. And I think part of it is, part of the lack of gratitude is people not understanding that history, and then also not, people not having a good global perspective of how billions of people around the world actually live and what they're going through and what they deal with. I mean, I, I always feel really grateful, for example, when I, you know, when I do go back to Nigeria and I'm going through certain parts of the country or you're in certain areas or certain villages and whatever, and you're just seeing how people are living and how millions and hundreds of millions of people, billions of people are, are living and whatnot. And you can't go there as someone who lives in, in the UK or, or lives in the US and is, is you know doing relatively well. You can't go there and not just have a perspective shift of being like, wow, like I need to stop. I need to stop complaining about everything because there are a lot of people here, almost everybody here would very gladly swap over with me. So whatever I think is going wrong in the UK or whatever I think is silly or whatever, yeah, good to talk about it, but ultimately stuff works really well. So basically the, really the people well. on the right should be funding, they should be crowdfunding <laughs> trips really to get like the, the truly privileged lefties so of America bad, yeah. to, to go to some of these places and realize just for, I mean, it, it wouldn't take that long. No, it's, uh, it's not a bad just idea. To see, just to see the difference of, of how good it is. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. West. And then, you know, so I think it's that. I do also think a factor is um, the, I think lots of the ideologies that we're talking about now, the goal is to create problems where they don't exist, really. So you'll have, you'll now have people trying to find, you know, people are like looking at every nook and cranny for, they're trying to find the hidden racism, or trying to find the hidden sexism. And it's like, if you have to go looking for it and start inventing new concepts to even find it. So for example, you'll hear people say things like America or the UK, oh, it's, it's just as racist as it ever was, but it's just different now. And I'm like, that's, that's, like, that's a stupid statement. That's a stupid statement. Like, no, no one is saying that these things completely 100% do not exist in anybody's heart or brain. Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah. You, you get people who are bigoted. But in terms of the society as, as a whole or the, the average person, I mean, I don't know how anyone in their right mind could say that the U.S. is more racist now than it was 100 years ago or 50 years ago or, or 30 years ago. Or, or it's, more, it's more homophobic now. You mean you didn't get hate crammed as you were walking here in LA? No, no. You, you've been okay out there on the streets? <laughs> I'm being dead serious. I had, some, I had a few people saying that I should be v careful of visiting the US now that Trump is president. I mean, that people really- People said that, and I was yeah. just like, you really think that it's like, stop watching whatever, you, <laughs> whatever yeah. you're watching. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. stop, because no, it's just not, it's not true. It's, it'll be fine, like, I'm, you know, or it's, it's people say, yeah, well, you know, if you're, a black guy and you're going to the States, like, you know, gotta be careful, like, you know, don't, don't interact with the cops or this. I'm, I'm kind of like, man. I There's a Starbucks about a mile away from me. You want to go over there and, and see what <laughs> yeah. happens? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's strange. It is, it is strange. But yeah, I think lack of perspective, lack of gratitude, whatever, whatever sources those things stem from, those are really what poison people's brains. And I think it's, I think it's a shame because I think that's what's really disempowering to people as well. I'm very much big on you know, personal responsibility, and I do believe that if you live in a country with great opportunity, everyone starts at different levels. Certainly some people have advantages and disadvantages of all sorts. So your starting point is not, is not determined by you, right? The, the universe, God, whatever the situation is, that gives you your, your starting point. You don't choose your parents, you don't choose your country of birth, your city of birth, socioeconomic status, anything like that. And that's good to understand, but over the course of an entire lifetime, over the course of many decades, I do think that where you end up is, for the most part, mm -hmm. up to you. It's not up to the system, it's not up to the government, it's not up to any politician or party. You are the person and, and who's going to- And how sad it would be if it was, right? Yeah it, yeah, it is sad. So 
I think most people sort of inherently know this too, but they still are continually looking for that thing above them, that person, or oh, if only we can get this guy into office, then all of our problems will be, that, that person doesn't exist, that policy doesn't exist, that party doesn't exist. You can vote for ones that you think more align with your, your views and your policies and things like that, but there's nothing that's gonna happen that's gonna fundamentally turn you from a, someone who's failing, someone who's super successful. I mean, yeah. that's, that's really a mindset shift. That's something that you've got to take on yourself. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics, instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.